five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. and gentlemen now i got it right i had to start this all over again several several times oh boy this is just it's it's horrible it just sucks all right okay i can't do any of this right anymore uh it's partially i think because of this drug i'm taking and it throws me off completely and i i really have to uh, i i'm gotta come in here before i do the show and practice the opening of the show and then everything will be just fine well, we have a guest tonight, and uh, a good one, and uh, you people love her, and uh, uh, so do I, uh, and we really care about her, too. Uh, well, I'll introduce her right here. There she is, ready and willing to talk to an ex-husband. Yes. Yeah, it's Ronnie Bennett. How are you, Ronnie? I'm good. How are you? I am. I've got a cold. See, I've got my tissues here, so if I blow my nose every now and then, folks, please excuse me. I don't wish to be rude, okay? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, how are you? I'm good. What about you, besides uh, the cold? Well, you know, colds, when you get them, are everything, right? <clears throat> when you don't have them, they're nothing. But here's how I, I don't understand how I have a cold. I don't go out. I don't meet people. So I don't shake hands. I don't get. Cl- so how did I get it? It's in the air, darling. I don't. I don't. I've uh, been led to believe that's not true. That it's in the air. Well, I'm not going to argue science with you. I have no idea. People get colds. What's the big deal? They say you get it most from if touching. If you're healthy and you take care of yourself, you'll be fine. When people shake hands, they catch it from shaking hands because they might shake hands with somebody who has it. You and- know, you're not a doctor. No, I've read this. I've read this. I've read all kinds of things that are bullshit, you know? And then I take I take a thing called coldies. Have you ever heard of coldies? No. Coldies is zinc. And zinc, supposedly, if you yeah, start... Yeah, right. Well, you, we'll look that up in a few different places and get oh, that many different oh, answers. Oh, oh, well, wait a minute. <laughs> look it up. You'll see zinc prevents... Prevents. Alex, and everybody who thinks there's a cure for something there isn't, if there were, we'd know about it. Yeah, well, we uh, the old line is we still have, with all the science, no cure for the common cold, right? No. Yeah. I just, I think the thing about being our age is that I haven't had a cold now in several years, but then I do have a few other problems. But, <laughs> Evil, yeah. um, but I haven't had one in several years. But what I found was when I did get one. Yeah. Uh, in the last, let's say, 15, 20 years, it's almost as bad as having the flu. It's so much harder than when I was. When I was a little kid and you had a runny nose, your mom just handed you some Kleenex and sent you out the door to go play or wherever you were going. Right. And it, and I don't remember feeling much about it, except it was irritating to have your nose run all the time. But um, But they seem to hit so much harder when you're old. Oh, they just feel worse. Well, I don't know. I just always never liked colds. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody? <laughs> huh? No, I just never liked colds. I mean, they they it, 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 as opposed to anything else. I would rather get the flu, okay, than a cold. At least a flu, I'm laid up in bed, my bones ache, blah, 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 blah. blah. With a cold. <laughs> I remember once with the flu, my big toe. You know, how your, your mind, you're just so out of it. Yeah. But I remember my big toe being the worst pain I had ever felt in my life. <laughs> just that one big toe. Really, the one big toe. So, it, well, I mean, it, is it your experience talking to older people and dealing with older people that they do get colds more often or less know. often or the severity That's is worse? That's something I ever thought about. Yeah, yeah. Um, my wife, she gets a cold and it sticks around for she says 10 days, and it seems to be I that way. Mine. I don't know anything about them except they sometimes hit yeah. me, and you 
Blow your nose a lot and it goes away. I'm pretty good with a three-day cold. One day, getting it. Second day, sneezing Alex, it. Third please. day, starts clearing up. What? what? Can't talk about colds? What's to say? I know you've got cancer. It's much more serious than a cold. I wasn't thinking about that. Just, <laughs> come on. Come on. You know. But anyway. Um, so. I've got a, I've got a note here. Or yesterday, I... I published a, a blog post mm. about, you know, since uh, Bernie Sanders had a heart attack last yeah, week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's been an uptick, on, you know, everywhere of news people and opinion people and pundits going back and forth on should there be a, an age limit for running for president. Mm -hmm. And so I left it up to my readers yesterday. One, the first thing I was surprised at how many people mentioned what well, we could give various psychological tests i have we'll cut we can come back to that i was really surprised at that yeah and then i mean given who my readers are i i didn't count up any numbers but i think most of them felt no you don't want any tests and others thought it was really important to have tests so i'm wondering about you uh, i'll i i i don't know about tests exactly I do think that Bernie. I know, but, well, I'm sorry, I put that wrong. I got. I meant, should there be a cutoff age? Yes. And I, I'll tell you why. Um, I I think. Don't if, say that as if you're the expert. You, that's your opinion, okay? <laughs> no, I am the expert. Uh, no. Um, everybody, when they have an opinion, thinks they're the expert. Okay, so you know. Uh, I just. For some reason, with uh, with Bernie Sanders as an example, uh, I feel that he is uh, at seventy eight. If you figure he's going to run when he's seventy nine, if he if he were the nominee, and then he's going to become president, maybe when he's eighty. No, 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 no. Where are you? Two years ahead. Next year we get a new president. We get a new president, but we don't know. What, is he seventy eight now? When's his birthday? It yeah. doesn't matter. Okay. I mean, come on. Let me put it this you're, way. You're, you're quibbling Okay, over let's say next year he's 79, okay? Yeah. That means that we've got, but at the end of his term, we're going to have an 83-year-old president. Do you feel comfortable with that? Even, I mean, you know you're aging. I'm aging. I don't think at 83 I would be capable of running. Oh, I'm not capable of that running That doesn't mean other people now. aren't. I think it's good for violinists. I think it's good for orchestra conductors, age. It's not but about that. It's about how we age. There are people in their 50s who are already decrepit. And there are people in their 90s who are way ahead of the rest of us. And and it's you, you can't say everybody's 65 older. You can't think of or treat them or do anything with them that is the same. Okay, but 60 to 70 or 75 is one age group. 75 to 80 or so is another and so on and some people do incredibly well in old age and others don't so you can't i mean i doubt anybody would be running for president who's who wasn't aging well because they wouldn't be able to stand the campaign um do you think bernie but, sanders is aging well yeah well, I'm not yeah. much interested in him, so I don't pay close attention. Yeah, how about how about Joe Biden? Um, Joe Biden. Um, <clears throat> I think that he's been through a lot, but mostly I don't buy his his lack of politics more well, than anything. Well, I mean, uh, but that's it's not the question. about his age that I would vote yes or no. It's about how much I think he could yeah, but we're put or wants to accomplish that's in line with what I think needs to happen in the country. We're talking about it aging, though. You, you were saying that certain people, uh, when they age, uh, don't uh, are much more alert and aware and everything mm -hmm. like that. And I'm asking you, do you think that applies to Joe Biden? Do you think that applies know. to Bernie I don't, Sanders? I, I don't know him. I've only seen him in oh, videos. I watch him, and I think he, he I would not want him running the country. I, I just, you know. Why? Tell me what he has done that makes you question. He doesn't his seem like he has the, um, uh, you know, the job is very taxing. 
And that's why I think... Is it? Do you know that? The the job of president? I think it's very taxing. Somebody somewhere said yesterday, I don't remember where I saw or heard this, was, you know, the thing about the president is you have staff. You have staff, but still, you have to make the ultimate decision. Yes. You know, and they're coming at you at a rapid fire every single day. There's a certain uh, stamina that one needs to be president of the United States. Would you agree with me on that? Yes, but not solely. I mean, who would you rather have as president? Joe Biden or Barack Obama, not because of politics, but because of the ability to do the job? Well, that would be hard because I really don't want either one of them. I, uh, you know, his fault or not, Obama couldn't get much accomplished, didn't know how, or was thwarted at every turn. Mm-hmm. But, um, and I don't know that that wouldn't still be true. So I'm not any more interested in him than I am in Joe Biden. But if you were to talk about uh, a, a prime age for somebody becoming president, where would you place that age? I would I place it somewhere. I, w- I, I would like them to have enough experience. The people who were pushing for someone, either her or someone like OAC, is she needs another decade oh. at least of seasoning in in, in politics and government yeah she said this is only her first real government job so i don't know that she knows her way around way around the system well no i i agree with you i mean i felt that when obama was I running think 35 is yeah. about right for you, you have to be that old to run for president well to be president. when obama ran my complaint against him was that he had been a senator for only two years. And so what did he know about running the government? Now, I, if you're a governor and you run for president, you have more experience at that kind of job than you it's would... a very different kind of government at the state level. Than very few senators ever get elected president. I mean, if you think about it, it's been governors, you know. Um, but, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about age. Yeah, yeah but I'm, what I'm saying is... I think that uh, a good golden age for being president would be perhaps 50 to 60, somewhere in there, and for well, stamina and for what, experience. What I'm interested in, what you're saying and how the little side trips you take and what people were saying on the blog yesterday mm-hmm. is whether whatever nuance or detail they gave to it as many people as did wanted to control who could run for president Mm -hmm. and i was surprised at that um why were people saying that there should be qualifications there yeah that that whatever qualifications they thought related to age there should be or what we should do to pass you after a certain age and say okay you can run Mm -hmm. i was surprised at how many people thought there, whatever they chose, that there should be limitations on who can run for president. Um, and, and, and I was just surprised in a democracy that there were as many as there were. Yeah. And, um, and, and I was surprised, more surprised. I have, you know, my arguments for why I think 35 to be able to be president is a perfectly good idea. I don't think we're really mature until about then. Yeah. Um, plus, it gives you some more information gathering time and right. learning. Right, right. But, uh, but I was surprised if you were going to control anything. I, I really thought in a democracy more people, even not young, mm-hmm. would want to do away with the lower age limit. Um, and nobody brought that up, um, which is good. But, but still, I, it's the placing of limitations that I was interested in, and you too. Mm-hmm. And and who is going to judge? How are you going to? How will you either pick the age at which you say no, you're too old to run for president, or what would you do to, uh, what test them or something? Yeah. Let me bring this up, okay? I think this is an important point, however. A younger person brings to the table newer ideas, 
newer ways of... we're talking old people. Oh, wait a minute. Let me finish with what I'm saying. It brings to the table new ideas. Many times uh, they will sit Old there. Old people don't. Well, well, let me finish. Let me finish. They will, wait, 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 wait. That's terribly I think, important to make I, that assumption I think, that old people don't have ideas. No, new ideas. And they don't, ha they I don't, don't have new I don't ideas? I don't think so. I think that older people have a tendency to work on what I call previous tapes, okay? In other words, hey, I did this back in uh, 19 blah, 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 and it should work You're now. You're an ageist. Yes. Alex? No, I'm not. I'm a practical. <laughs> I'm a, okay. I'm a practical ageist. All right. No, and when we're done here, I will spend some amount of time today tracking down the papers that have been written by people far more qualified than you. That I've forgotten the numbers, but that for instance, brand new companies and kinds of companies, more are started by people older than younger. Okay. Let me ask you a question. And there are others like that. There are other studies like that. Are you set in your ways? I don't think of it. That's, that's something that I, I've been meaning to write about because I have been drinking every morning the mm -hmm. same coffee in the same place <laughs> for 40, count them, at least 40 years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And no, you can't. When I'm away from home, I'll drink whatever coffee is in front of me. But I like this coffee. It took me a year to find the blend I like. Mm -hmm. And I'll be damned if I'll go through that again. I don't think that's set in my ways. I think that's good for me. Having found something quite young that I really like and my taste hasn't changed over the years, if it had, I would be trying out other coffees. Um, if somebody if somebody came to you ways. and said, Ronnie, I've got a great new coffee for you. Why don't you just try it? Would you try it? Sure. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, but I think... I, 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 I know I can tell you right now, after 40 years, I've done that enough times, I'm not probably going to be interested, but... I'm um, sure, I, especially if I'm away from home. I don't care whatever coffee you can put in front of me. Um, but I don't see, I see an awful lot of things of set. If you're, if you're our age and you won't get a mobile phone, um, I think you're going to, if for no other, there are practical reasons, you'd better start doing that now because there's going to be no other way to do certain things from now on. Like call people. <laughs> <clears throat> well, nobody, young people don't call anyway, but um, I think that throughout our lives, like my coffee example, mm -hmm. is that you find something you really like and it's available. Why wouldn't you have something every day that you really like as opposed to some random thing you don't know what you're going to taste in the morning? And if you like your bed made a certain way. And if you don't like to eat eggplant, it's the one thing I do not I eat. Hate, I hate. No, like me eggplant. too. It, yeah. um, and you can't get me to try it. I think that it smells awful when it's cooking, let alone taste. Why does anybody uh, like eggplant? That's what I don't understand. Well, that we're not discussing that, Alex. How did you ever get through a radio career? Um, <laughs> barely. <and> barely. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and those are not set in my ways. Those, as we go through life... We find things we like, and it simplifies life to settle down on one of them. Okay, but this now we're talking about somebody running the government, and it isn't about what coffee you're going to drink this morning. It's about decisions that have to be made, and are you making those decisions thinking out of the box, or are you thinking of those solutions? Oh, if, if, if from, anybody ever uses out of the box in front of me again, please, just stop it. Don't. Cliches just don't work here. But, uh, no, it's well, not I, a cliche. It's I, not I a cliche. It's everybody not. Everybody after, I don't know which age you've chosen, everybody after a certain age cannot decide to kill all the Kurds in Syria. Okay. All right. But the, is that what you're saying? No, the point that I'm making is, is that a older person is going to make decisions based a lot on previous experience that upon so. no that God, I would hope so. wait a minute then upon newer solutions which they have come for out of the box because they weren't restricted by saying well this worked then I guess it'll work now they're is that, saying is, is that how you think uh, I was very proud that at the age of I think 74 I came up with a concept called the citizen panel which was to put like as many people as I could on, on the screen at one time, all talking with each other. I considered that pretty much a new way of doing a talk show. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm sure glad I was. How many people? I I have gotten up to about. I uh, I don't like to go over twelve people. Too many for me. Well, I, I they optim, when they, the optim, they keep booking six people for a panel on MSNBC, and every person gets to say one sentence. Oh, but this is a group discussion. This is just a group discussion. Okay, but anyway, th that's not the point. The fact that I came up with that at like 74, I was happy about. I don't think I could come up with a new idea again. I think that's my last big new idea. And I've had a lot of new ideas in my life. I mean... You may dispute this, but I, I, I was the first podcast uh, years ago. I invented the whole podcast thing about downloading it to your machine and listening to it later yeah, yeah, yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But, but that was easy to do then because any I could come up with new ideas constantly. I don't think I can come up with new ideas now. I'm the same age as Bernie Sanders, okay? Or maybe he, he, I'm 79, he's 78. I don't come up with new ideas. You know what? One of the things that old people do is what you just did. What? You know how a little kid, when you see a little kid only about this tall, and she can just say, hi, Mary, how old are you? And she says, I'm three and a half. Yeah. Well, you just did the damn same thing. Old people do that when they get after a certain age. Of, I'm, se I'm 79, and you know, that's a year older than Bernie. Well... I don't know. It's just like being a little kid again. No, no, no. It's not like being, little kids. Kids will tell you how old they are to the month, you know, because they're looking forward. They're looking forward to getting older, okay? Because when they become five, ah, things are going to be better than when they're four and a half. With people who are our age, we don't say we're 80 years old till our 80th birthday. I don't say I'm 79 and three quarters. Oh, I do, just because by this time... You know, by two or three months before my birthday, it's uh, just whatever you're closer to. Seems well, easy. Bernie, the other day when they asked him how old he was, he said, I'm this many. Anyway, uh, let me ask you this question, okay? Uh, now we have Bernie. There's a different nuance to Bernie's <laughs> career. He's had a heart attack, okay? You feel comfortable with that? Mm-hmm. Really? You, you, you want to... I have a friend who... I uh, had a heart attack and big deal heart surgery 12 or 15 years ago. He's just going strong. Okay. But you're not, your friend is uh, a friend. If he's your president and he's in charge of the country, do you want somebody with a heart condition? What do you think vice presidents are for? Well, in the case of Pence, to annoy us. Uh, but, you know. Well, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. the, the, don't always go for the joke, Alex. Just I'm not going. I'm not going for the joke. I'm. I'm. Uh, you know, he annoys the crap out of me. Well, I, what about Trump? Oh well, he. You know something? I would rather see Trump be president than Pence. Okay. This is the kind of thing being said that makes it very hard for me to go on. Trump has just consigned a whole people to death. Oh, no, no. Look, you're not... I, I, don't take get me wrong. I think Trump's terrible. I think Trump should should not be president of the United States. I think But was, you said you would take him over anybody. No, or over no, him. no. I said I would... No, no I said I would take him over Pence. Yes, I just Pence said Because Pence is a religious zealot who would shut down more stuff that you really would really drive you crazy. You know, Trump is doing this out of his own stupidity. Pence was, will do it out of his own we religious fervor. Too, I mean, he believes, Pence believes that you can, you know, transform gays from gay to straight by religion. Yes, yes, as we all know, but, you know, you don't get to do things like that. That's Supreme Court would have to decide something like that, not yeah. Pence. Well, we, we said, how much can Trump ruin this country? You know, it's Who a, said that? I, well, I have often felt that this democracy kind of had an insulation against this sort of thing, but apparently I was wrong, you know, that, that Trump is doing a lot to destroy this country. You're not just discovering that now, I hope. No, no, I'm not discovering okay. it now. This is what um, it was like when we were married, folks. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> you get a brief idea. Well, you were saying some pretty outrageous things that you think old people are all the same from what you were no, saying. No, I didn't say they were all the at same. At the same age, and that's so 
far it, from true that it's 180 degrees well, out. When I talk about old people, I'm talking about I'm to- talking from experience. I'm old. I'm older than you are, so I have more experience. But than you're you do. not the only old person. I know I'm not the only old person, but I know what I think I would be capable of at this point in my life. But that's life. you. I'm just saying that I don't want to take a chance on somebody else my age, okay? That's all I'm saying. You know, I mean, I I think uh, Elizabeth Warren is, what, 70, and I I don't have any question about her. But my question is, there are two questions. Number one, uh, and uh, I guess we're going to... Apparently, though, wait, before you get to the next point, apparently, then, you don't believe... What I have said, which is not me, which is mm-hmm. many researchers saying this, that old people age at dramatically different rates. No, I agree with you that they do age at radically different rates. But I think when you're talking about 78, 79, up around in there, you're starting to talk about the, the, the edge of uh, being able to say, okay, this person may be a spry 79. You know, I don't, I, I, I just don't believe there's such a thing as a spry. Is, by there the are way, some people who are 79. There are some people who are 79 who are four years younger than that, emotionally and every other way, physically and so on. On the other hand, there are people who are my age who are 84, technically, you know. So, I, you know, I agree with you. There's a difference. But do you want to take that chance? Yes. I if I if I think the person, you know, in all my other evaluations would be a good precedent, yes, of course I would. Well, why don't we do this as a qualification? Uh, why don't we ask everybody running for president, what time do you go to bed now? Why? <laughs> because older people go to bed earlier. Yes, they need more sleep. Yeah, well, if they need, but the president doesn't get to sleep a lot. Do you know that? We're, we've been led to believe that. But you don't know that. I mean, in Trump's case, all he does all day is watch television. You know. But that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. You know. uh, but my other question is, and that would be as regards Biden, do you think that Trump in his own weird, stupid way uh, has made uh, Biden less of a candidate? I don't know that we can tell yet. Because I think a lot of people believe Biden has not responded to Trump aggressively. Oh, because they wanted, you know, who? Some writers say that. People no, I think that. people uh, people feel... People don't say that. It's no, writers pe- and pundits. Pe- this is an audition for president of the United... Uh, for running against Donald Trump. And if you can't be aggressive now, what's going to happen when you're running? Do you think that the g- aggression and loud and punching in the face verbally is the only way to deal with No, some? I think they just wanted a little more aggressive answer than, than Biden gave, that it was just a little too soft. So you have an idea of how a presidential candidate should mm-hmm. behave, and if they vary from that, then they're not... No, I, 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 after Trump, I'm not going to define what a presidential candidate should be like. I mean, the president, Trump, I, I described. What you have with Biden? I, well, I described, I described, I described the Trump campaign as being a remake of the producers. Okay, Let, let's see everything we can do wrong, <clears throat> so we don't get elected, and then we'll walk away with the money. The fact was, he, I think he won, and they all looked at each other like they did in the producers. They, where did we go right? Could we go back to where we were that yeah. you didn't answer? What? Is that so you're saying that you've got this little area where it's a proper way to respond to that kind of an attack. And if you're one side or the other, then he's not qualified to be president. It's a question of aggressiveness in a campaign. And it is... No, why it, do you oh, think no, you no. need to be aggressive because in the it's, same uh, way that be, Trump is aggressive? Because it, it, We're not saying being uh, aggressive. Well, they're they're complaining he just didn't give a good response. That he didn't give a, a hard enough response to say, no, you know, absolutely not. Whatever he had to what do. What would you say in his place? You know, the, you know, you follow politics. You know enough to come up with I'd, I'd say you I've had an, I'd, say, I'd say I've had enough of this crap. I quit, but that's me. Um, well, that isn't what I asked again. I, I think I would take a more I would just more aggressively answer the question. 
you know. But give me what you think you should have done in the manner you think you should have done it. I should say none of, none of what Donald Trump is asserting in any way, shape, or form is true. Instead, he's that sounds he's pretty kind of weak parsing. to me. <laughs> no, uh, and that's why I'm not running for president. Oh, I thought you were going to say, and that's why I'm not married to her anymore. <laughs> that was answer number two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I'll tell you, I tell I got to tell you a quick story. We're running over time, but I got to tell you a quick story. Um, you knew my father, you know. Yes. And you knew how man. you knew how much I loved him. But you know, after he died, I kind of went into a state of denial and didn't you know didn't think much about him after he died. And uh, I think you said I cried in my sleep the night that he died, but. Uh, so the other day, and there, and there are times when you will miss that person. We were next door. It's actually in the other building. This guy, these people invited us up to their apartment. And all over the apartment are violins. Uh, he, his, he uses that as an office. for. There's one in London, and he's the New York office. They restore, refurbish, and sell violins. Mm-hmm. And I said, it's wonderful. My father was a violinist. He said, then I think you can appreciate this. And he takes me into another room. He's got a lock on the door. He opens up the door. He then goes to a safe. He opens up the safe. He pulls out two violin cases, opens them up, and in one there's one violin, and in the other one there are two violins. And he said, you know what you're looking at? I said, what? He said, three Stradivariuses. Which, of course, in case people don't know, is maybe the finest violin ever made. One was made in 1680, the other one in, 19, in 1720. I don't know how old the third one was. Total value of the three violins that I was sitting there looking at was $12 million. And I, I and then, then he had me take one of the, he had me take one of the Stradivariuses and I put it under my chin. And up to my, you know, and I, at that precise moment, when I got to call my father. Oh, oh my goodness, yeah. Because my father would have died to hear this story. Yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. would have just loved it. So nice. all of a sudden, after forty years or whatever, I miss my father. You know, yeah. he was a great guy. He yeah, really was. he really was. Yeah. And he liked you, too. He thought you were terrific. Yeah, I liked him pretty much, too. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he was, uh, I, 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 he was a great person, and I've never been able to achieve that greatness, you know. And uh, for that, I'm eternally sad because uh, he was a, just, just a great man. He would have been proud of you if he was still here. Oh, I think so, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he would have said, why the fuck did you and that woman get divorced? You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is Ronnie Bennett. Uh, she has timegoesby.net if you want to read her blog, which you should do. If you don't, shame on you. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, right? All right. Take okay. care. Bye. Still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And that uh, was Ronnie Bennett. We enjoyed talking with Ronnie. We love talking with Ronnie. Why shouldn't we? She's terrific. Anyway, uh, we uh, let me see here. I'm going to open up the uh, Skype lines if I remember how to do that. Man, I fucked up the opening of the show tonight like I've never fucked it up before. And it was all because I was just doing everything wrong. Okay. And uh, I think I'm, I've gotten to the point where I should stop doing this because I just can't, I can't get it right. Stuff I do every night. You know, I added a little thing to the opening and that kind of made things more confusing with that, that big opening that we do now. But still, nonetheless. Anyway, let me turn the, uh, the, the, uh, the Skype on so you can call. And I uh, hope you enjoyed Ronnie. She's terrific. Uh, and... Uh, 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 I have something to tell you, and and I'm I'm grieved by this. Although it's 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 not uh, not 
ter- I mean, it's terrible, but it's not horrible. But how, how can I put it? Oh, well, wait a minute. Oh, somebody was trying to call. Phil was trying to call, and then he hung up. So, um, um, Well, I'll tell you this in a couple of minutes, because he's going to be calling, and then I'll be, be in the middle of me trying to get him to be... Uh, what's... Well, wait a minute. Everybody's having trouble tonight. Wow. Well, that's not good. Let me see. Let me call Phil. Let me see here. Okay. There we go. There's Kathleen. Okay, we got Kathleen. Uh, let me see here. And now we're going to try and get Phil on. I don't know what happened at the beginning there, but something was going on. Now, let me uh, let me see if I can uh, do this again. Uh, I'm going to go here to uh, Live by Pepe. That goes there. And uh, then we go to number two. That'll be Phil. That'll be Scuba Diver. Uh, okay, there we go. And I think that's, uh, that's our panel so far for tonight. Look at that. A paltry panel. Well, quality, however. So that's, and, that's good. And you may not have me very long. Why? Uh, there's, uh, well, they were supposed to turn the electricity off. Uh, somebody's. Yeah. What? Uh, I'm, I'm getting, uh, yeah, well, live with it. All right. What? Uh, they're going to, PG&E is turning the, uh, electric off for a million people in Northern California. Yeah, 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 I know you, you guys are all complaining about that. And I had that problem tonight with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Damien, and I had it with our sports show, and they said, we don't know what's going to happen because the electricity is going off, and the electricity never went off. So, Well, 8 o'clock tonight, my time, yeah. which I guess is, what, 11 your time, uh, they're, uh, they're talking about uh, uh, pulling the plug. Yeah, what about you out there in uh, Tracy, uh, Kathleen? Nope. Uh, if, Tracy, if Tracy burned, it would be a plus. <laughs> What's well, the reason why it. they're turning off the electricity to prevent fi- forest fires? Uh, yeah, up in Damien's area where they had the uh, fire, mm-hmm. it was due to PG&E lines. Mm-hmm. So what happened was uh, PG&E is being proactive, and they're going to cut everybody's electricity off because we're supposed to have low humidity and uh, and high gusty winds. Mm-hmm. So anytime you have gusty winds yeah. and humidity, you won't have an electricity. But in they Northern didn't California. say they were going to cut yours off. They said they uh, might. They, uh, they have cut off certain areas. I thought they had already cut off Damien's area. The uh, they have cut off uh, uh, some areas. All I'm saying, they, all I'm saying is, is that so far the two people who said. We don't know if we can do shows tonight because of the electricity. Uh, every one of them, none of them had any problems. No, yeah, well, they, what it is is they, you know, if they cut off the electricity here in Tracy, it's like 52 homes, and it's in Old Town Tracy where they have the wires above. All our wires in my neighborhood are underground. What they're worried about is trees falling into the wires. In my neighborhood, everything's underground, so they're not going to cut What it is, us. it's PG&E who, in the last wildfires, got sued like a motherfucker because— Then they went the, bankrupt. Because, yeah, because their lines uh, were causing the fires, or, right. or so it was supposed, and they had to pay out all kinds of money to people, and they're just trying to hedge their bets on this one. That's all they're doing. They yep. haven't paid out a dime. Uh, what they did was they went bankrupt— and uh, and the bankruptcy staved off uh, the payments. Yeah, I, they they haven't paid. Mm. Uh, uh, and you know what's going to happen is uh, the the state will take over the utilities. Okay, uh, I'm I'm sure. I mean, in Tracy, Sean and I were just going to play uh, "Not So Little House, Not on the Prairie." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway. If the electricity went off, I wouldn't care. He would probably have a slight conniption fit. Really? Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, I wasn't on last night because uh, I had a, t- a call. I caught, I caught a cold and I was feeling like crappy. And I didn't oh. want to do it. And this morning I woke up and the cold was terrible. But by the time it was time to do the show, it seems to have gone away. I've just, I've just got a little congestion and that's it. And then every now and then I will sneeze horribly. 
Well, I saw the uh, the interview with uh, Ronnie Bennett uh, that you had put on yesterday, and, uh, and you had a cold. Uh, it wasn't uh, enough of a cold to overcome cancer, so you didn't come in first on that show. No, I didn't come in first. No, I never, <laughs> I never will come in first with my hypochondria. Yeah, yeah. but I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it. You know. And you know what? I was very blessed to have met her because I remember her coming out and telling us the wonderful stories about Barbara Walter and such. Yeah. Yeah. Where, 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 where did that happen? Well, we were in the new apartment, so it had to have been between 98 and, and, she, and, she you came, know, and she probably came. 2001. What? And she was in town and came by? Because I didn't know the yes. two of you had ever met. I, because I have, yes. I have a a rule of either old wives or old girlfriends should never meet, be in the same space because it's like a, a negative force, and the universe implodes <laughs> when that happens. No, I think it was uh, she and I against you. Well, th that's what happens too. You also go over there and you start talking to each other, and then every now and then you give glances over to me like, "Yeah, I know." <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> So it's uh, you know I, I I never I never never like to have two wives in the same place at the same time. But no, you know what? It was an absolutely wonderful visit. Yeah. There was no negativity, nothing. Right. It was right. really really nice. Right. Well, she uh, you know uh, she and I we uh, we had a I won't say it was a contentious uh, a divorce. It was. Uh, I mean, I was a terrible guy at the time. I cheated like crazy on her, and you know and she couldn't take it. And uh, it, it uh, probably was a marriage that was never meant to be. You know, it, we, we, what we were meant to be was good friends. And that's what we've now remained. But for years, we didn't talk to each other. And then one day, I felt compelled to call her up and say, I apologize for being such a shit. You know? Nice. And uh, from that time on, we've been friends. You know? Uh, and, and, and that's the way it should be. You know, sometimes... Absolutely. Sometimes you try to. Sometimes you make the big mistake by taking a really good friendship and trying to turn it into a marriage, and yeah. that doesn't necessarily work. Like I don't know how you and I would have worked as a marriage. I have no idea. I know we would have made each other laugh a lot, and there would have been a lot of farting, and there would have been a lot of the stuff like that. And by the way, tonight I have terrible gas, and thank God this is on video because you can't it can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> and and you can't smell it. Uh, you don't have smell a vision? No, no. But maybe I could get one out really loud so the audience could hear it tonight. You know, at some point. But uh, you, you got to mic up down there. No, I don't need to mic up. These are that loud. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that I don't need to. Put a baffle on it. Uh huh? Put yeah. Put a baffle on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I always find when I take uh, one day off, uh, the next day hardly anybody calls. I think it's their way of making me suffer, you know, because I didn't nah, do the show. I, I don't. I don't think so. I, uh, you know, most of the California contingent. We're, we're we were told that the utilities would go off at uh, midnight last night. Then we were told they would go off at uh, eight in the morning. Then uh, four in the afternoon. Now eight at night. Yeah. Uh, so they're just fucking with us. They're just you know? they're lying. They've always been lying sacks of shit. I know? think this is retribution for making them go bankrupt. Totally. You know, they're saying, "Hey, you know, we'll teach you guys a lesson." No, but they're going, There's they're some going, wind out there. Yeah. We'll see how much you appreciate us. Yeah, you know? yeah. So I mean, but I know they're hedging their bets too. They don't it, it, because if they say, "Well, we're going to turn off the electricity if it gets really bad," they're not gonna they're not gonna get sued. Okay, because well, they, they get sued they, anyway. They'll get sued anyway, but nobody will win because they'll say, "Well, see, we tried to warn you." You know, mm. uh, yeah. there we go. There's uh, there he is. Uh, wait, Damn. hold on a second. Uh, Dan is. Uh, let's see here. Do I have him here? Scooby Dan, Dan, Mr. Dan. There we yeah. are. Okay. I. You know what I'm yeah. finding? I have to wear my glasses more, and I don't want to. But <laughs> uh, it, this morning. So I'm Dude. blind. I'm blind. I can't operate this equipment anymore because the opening was so fucked up. I had to do three restarts on the show. Okay, and and then I'm I'm passing gas like crazy while Ronnie's on. 
well, you know that that three restart that's good practice you know uh, i um, well, but you know uh, you know I, what what go ahead I, I went i went into work this morning yeah and uh the monitor on one of my salespeople's desks uh, stopped working and so uh i went to costco to buy another <laughs> monitor and the smallest thing i wanted a 22 yeah. and the smallest thing they had was a 27 yeah. So I buy the 27, yeah. I put the 22 on their desk that yeah. I had in my yeah. office, and this 27, I don't have to take my eyeglasses off anymore to be able to see the monitor. Because what was happening was every time I'm looking, I'm pulling the monitor closer to me. Yeah. Uh, so maybe you just need a bigger monitor. Well, or, I, no, I, I don't want a bigger monitor. I'm happy with the way things are. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, but I just... Uh, I don't know. It's it's here's what happened. Uh, you know, I had this neuropathy. So yeah. uh, uh, Walter Sabo's in town. He says, "Well, I have neuropathy, but I have diabetic neuropathy." He says, "But neuropathy is when your nerves uh, start going bad in your legs and feet and so on." And you won't go to a chiropractor okay. well, who I'm probably could I'm fix going that in to a, seconds. I'm going to a po chiropractor next week, and let's see yeah. what happens. I think you're wrong, but anyway. Uh, but I will be happy. That's what to, they do. I will be happy to say you were right. You know, yeah. uh, but it's, this guy says, well, this is just the beginning. We can't fix it all in one thing. I want to see some, I, I don't want to see miracles. I just want to see some change in the first visit. You, you know why they say that? Why? So they can get you to sign up for 10 uh, sessions. Well, they also say they're going to turn off your electricity for eight hours tomorrow just to be on the safe side. Yeah. But anyway, but it, anyway, anyway, so like I'm feeling numb now because I'm crossing my legs. So stop doing that, Alex. So anyway, so Sabo told me, uh, I'm taking this thing called Lyrica. Uh, and he says, it's great. You know, it uh, at night and don't have problems with my feet anymore and whatever. So I started taking a little bit and took it one night and it did, didn't, kind of didn't work. And then the next night, finally, I started taking it twice a day. And my feet are feeling better, you know. Is it, Lyrica for diabetic, diabetes, yes. diabetic neuropathy, or is it for just neuropathy? It, for diabetic neuropathy, but also for nerve pain, and that's what I have. So it it fits in the category. It's it's the same thing as he gave me a gabapentin, and it's an offshoot of gabapentin. It's a more powerful gabapentin. Plus, you get a really nice high. Really? Yeah. So for the in the afternoon, I take it in the afternoon. I'm like floating really nice, you know. But you have trouble operating right. farm machinery. Well, I, and, I, I couldn't gather. operate this machinery tonight. That's <laughs> right. why I was mm -hmm. fucking up so badly. But I figure if I keep taking it, I'll get used to it, and you know, I'll be fine. But yeah, I saw it was maybe uh, ten minutes, eight minutes uh, after the yeah. hour. No. Uh, to where it started, yeah, the, neuropathy, the show started. Neuropathy, uh, it doesn't have to be diabetic neuropathy. It says it takes care of fibromyalgia, uh, fibro, fibromyalgia, fibromyalgia or whatever yeah, that's called. Yeah. So it, it, it takes care of any kind of nerve pain that's going somewhere. And it does, uh, it has made my feet feel a lot better. You know, What so. are the side effects? I, I feel kind of drowsy, but it's kind of a high drowsy. It's a controlled Uncontrollable substance. Uncontrollable flatulence. Uncontrollable flatulence. Yes, that's the other thing. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, like Lepetamine, I hope I can now learn to play songs with my ass. You know. Uh, but oh. it, what? I'd work. Uh, hmm? More, uh, more for uh, Gabnet uh, Entertainment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Dan, my are you at, back my at school my, now? My ass can I have a show of its own. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm, always... I'm, I'm back. I'm You're back to back. school. I've been. Uh, I'm. I'm doing the teaching and the door dashing. So, mm. I, I'm. Uh, what, I'm a multi-income stream having. Did, uh, did you say the, Did you say the door dashing? Those are the jeans. Door dash. Door dash. Not that door dash. What's but door dash? What's uh, door dashing? It's the gig economy. It's the like Uber for food. For they food. deliver the food. Oh, I see. Do, do you do you food. eat do you eat some of the food that is on the way to the people that you're delivering to? You know, like if you're delivering I, shrimp cocktail. I, I, I as my as my sacred charge to get the meal to the customer exactly as it was given to me. If I would, I couldn't live with myself if I ate a French fry or anything like that. I couldn't do it. 
I can't make it home from uh, McDonald's or Burger King with the French or in and out with the French fries. You know, I'll pick them up yeah, for Faye. Those are your fries. You can do what you want with them. They're not no, my no, fries. they're Faye's fries. I, I stop on the way home. I she I she I said, what do you want? She says number two. Uh, I get the number two. Yeah. It's got fries. You know, oh, just one, just she's two. Your wife. She's, not a, she's not a customer. Yeah. She's uh, yeah. she's your wife or whatever she is. Yeah, she, yeah, or she, yeah she's living with him. She's tolerating. Yeah, she's very, She's tolerating him. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that poor Sean woman. And I haven't had fast food in like over three years. By the way, Sean is her son. Uh, let's mention that because yeah. people know. And that's Phil over there. Phil is the guy with the. With the, 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 how do I describe him? The bald headed guy, yeah, with the glasses. I know you, <laughs> bald. Yeah, those are your, those are your hair plugs. I'd get my money back if I were you. And of course, that's Dan. It's Mr. Dan, the man with the van. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where do you park I, the creepy van? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Did you, uh, did you have those recordings? I know Rob had those recordings, right? What? What? The Uncle Dan's creepy van. I don't know where those went. I almost forgot oh. that whole bit. It happened so long ago. It was. I, I thought they were funny. I mean... Uh, well, why did we start with the creepy van? You were doing some podcasts or something, I did, right? I did a podcast. Yeah, everybody does podcasts, by the way. Yeah, yeah. But you can't. I, you, I, but you're I, not qualified. I, I, you're I not qualified to do a podcast because you're not a radio announcer who's been fired. Right. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't have a. I don't have big name recognition. Boy, I just let one go here, and I'm gl hope. I'm glad you're not here. <laughs> go ahead. What? That'll stain. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. Well, uh, I don't have. Obviously, I don't have your name recognition, Alex. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I was trying to do this little podcast. I did some episodes of it. Yeah, I was doing like different stuff all the time on it. And um, yeah, but yeah, and then yes, you and Rebel Soak Jim were talking about um, Uncle Dan's creepy thing because I went by the name Uncle Dan on the podcast. Yeah. So yeah, said Uncle Dan's creepy van because I'm an uncle and I like the sound of Uncle Dan. So that's right. that. Right. <laughs> so we started making jokes about Uncle Dan's creepy van. Yeah, and then Rob made those commercials for uh, <laughs> yes. Uncle Dan's creepy van. Yeah, and those were hilarious. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Well, anyway, uh, that's then. This is now. Jeff's back. Jeff's back. Jeff's back from I'm back. Uh, Jeff's back from every country that Trump wants to start a war in. Well, how how are you? <laughs> it's nice to be home. Yeah. Did you have a good yeah. time? Yeah, we had a great time. Where where'd you go? Well, we started at uh, Budapest. Budapest. Yeah. Yeah, on a, and on a river, and the river didn't work. What do you mean the, the river didn't work? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have enough. They didn't have enough water. Well, if is this one of those situations where if you threw a river and no water came, would there be a, a river? <laughs> so, what, is it a river cruise yeah. that you were doing? It's a river cruise, yeah. yeah. And uh, there wasn't enough to, for the to draft. <laughs> so you had this scraping sound during the. Yeah, entire... you guys were dragging ass. <laughs> so they don't put you. This, so they put you in a hotel. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which we're going to start in, in a hotel anyway. But uh, can you turn your can you turn then, your camera can you turn your camera a little bit so that light isn't coming in from the back because oh, sure. it makes you kind of throb. Uh, How's no, that? The other not way. that way. The other way. Get the, get the light. Yeah, out. There we it. go. That way. Okay. And then move, right yeah. Then move yourself over. No, that's fine. That oh, light's fine. That fight. Turn yeah, that. No, 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 no. Now you're no, no. Uh, yeah. And to get rid of that light. Get rid of that light. Is it the other one? Yes, yeah. that one in the when back. When there's light oh. from the back, it yeah. silhouettes you. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, you. Oh, here we go. Protection program. Here we go. He's going to go turn it off here. Oh, there we go. Okay. There we go. And then and then, Jeff, turn on the one that's in front of you. You see the light that's on uh, there. It's very yeah. nice. Yeah, it's fine. Very nice. Yep. Oh, yeah. So anyway, so they had to put you. They could. They you couldn't take the river cruise because there wasn't enough water in the river. <laughs> well. But what they do is after a couple of days, yeah. uh, they put you on a bus yeah. and they bring you to a new location on the on the river. Yeah. 
which is Vienna. Yeah. And there, everything was fine. Oh, okay. Right. Boat, there was plenty of water. And yeah. After that, it was a no-brainer. That sounds good. That sounds great. And you had a nice time, and it was... Uh, it was a great time. Yeah. A great time. Yeah. And at the end of it... Yeah. We were at the end of the boat. Yeah. And then we went to... It's called the stern. The <laughs> Prague. Yeah. And Prague is not part of the river. Yeah, but, so, but Prague. Did you get to? Did you get to see any porn yeah. being made there? No. no that, get, that you know. You know that it. is the European porn capital, don't you? Well, I didn't get invited. <laughs> you know, is that where David Hajek lives? I don't know. Yeah. It, is it? Yeah. Yeah. He, well, the thing about I, Prague. A few years ago, Prague was the go-to destination for Americans who wanted a job because they just liked Americans with experience, and they were hiring them like crazy at crazy wages. And I, I don't know if that's beautiful. true anymore, but I do know that what then jumped in there, among other things, was the porn industry, and it became the porn capital of Europe, mm. basically. Which. Well, uh, Prague is kind of like one of those strange countries that didn't get exploded during World War II. Hmm. Oh, really? Oh, that's because yeah. they gave up in 30 minutes. Something like that. Yeah. But the strange part, the other strange part is they have a, a, a whole uh, Jewish uh, quarter. Hmm. But there's no Jews anymore. No. So what they have is well, all these museums. Well, actually, it used to be a, a, a Jewish quarter, but they it's now a dime. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> see, yeah, I can raise the fifty cents, and they all move to Brooklyn. I can prove I can make those jokes because I'm Jewish. That's right. I'm a self I'm a self loathing Jew. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so anyway, go ahead. So they have a whole bunch of uh, what you call museums or histories or whatever, which happen to be built on synagogues. Oh, really? Mm. Okay. Okay. Are they so it's kind of interesting. Are, are they are they're the, uh, the uh, unsay? What is it they do where, where it's no longer holy ground? Uh, uh, they yes, sanct sanct this, uh, sanctify it. Do they Goodbye. desanctify it? You yeah. know, like the the eternal flame still going. Uh, no, you know. uh, no, not there. No. Oh. no, no. In Budapest, I think the flight, I think it was running. Yeah. Uh, it was. That was a beautiful. Uh, oh, city. let me ask the Jews here. What year is it? It's Yom Kippur. Oh yeah, I forgot. Now That's, I I I got the. They sent me a Jew. They sent me a Jewish calendar. It's, isn't it twenty seven something? I, I, it's 57 something. Well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I'll ask the authority. Echo, what Jewish year is this? This might answer your question. On September 29th, 2019, the year of the Rosh Hashanah, also called Jewish New Year, was 5,780. 5,780. We huh? are from the future, 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 future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So the, the, is it like like the eight, now? So now it's like the eighties. Yeah, so that's like fifty-seven eighties. Yeah, so fifty-seven eighties, man. We yeah. are from the future. That's all I can say. <laughs> you know. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait, maybe we can do it this way. We the way are. Is I, no, I can't get the echo going. Damn it. Uh, do you have Alexa Silver? What? Do I have what? Oh. Live, Alexa Silver. Oh, yes. <laughs> I remember that one. Oh, that for, was for funny. What? For, 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 what? For, it's fun. Any, anything that sounds like Alexa. Is Allegra. It? Allegra. Allegra. <laughs> Odessa. Well, you see, I don't, this doesn't respond to Alexa because I, I changed it so it would respond to Echo uh, because uh, it, um, uh, uh, it, it would get mixed up with my name. So if somebody said Alex, it would probably, what do you want? It already sometimes talks when it isn't asked anything. Because I have it in the bedroom, I have it near a uh, surround sound speaker, and I know something goes on on TV, and somebody says something, and she goes, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for that. She's got Alexa Heimers. She's got <laughs> Alexa Heimers, exactly. 
When did they do that bit? Because if it was this uh, weekend, no, it was like it was a couple years ago. Oh, it's okay. on uh, YouTube. Yeah, it's oh, totally okay. funny. Oh, yeah, I think it was just when Alexa first came out. Because man, I watched it this uh, last Saturday night, and it was so bad, it was ridiculous. You know, and I love, yeah. I love what's her I'm name, the, the woman from uh, from Kate? Fleabag. No, the woman from Fleabag. Oh yeah, she uh, yeah. was great. She's she's terrific, but um, best. Huh? Yeah. I, was, I got, I got, I got some um, um, kind of bad news. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Our good friend Will Durst was supposed to yesterday do uh, the uh, uh, the call we do every three weeks or so, and uh, uh, I he he did, wasn't there, and I called his home. And uh, Debbie, his wife, answered, and I said, where's Will? I'm supposed to do a thing with him. And she says, he had a stroke last night. Oh, my God. Oh, no. uh, he was at a theater somewhere, and he was about to go on, and all of a sudden he felt something or another, and he collapsed, and he had a stroke. Oh, no. And they rushed him off to the hospital, then off to another one that was even better. And supposedly, I mean, he's, supposedly he's doing okay, but he's uh, got his speech is slurred. And the right, his right side or left side, I don't know which one, is, is impaired. Uh, and they don't know how much of that will come back and how much of that won't. You, you probably know a lot about this. Uh, too much. Uh, too much, more than you want to know. Mm. Um, what are his chances, do you think, I mean, in a situation like this? Well, I mean, I, you know, I, I can't statistically say it's a 50-50 chance or anything like that because... Yeah. I think it depends upon what happens to his brain at, at the time. Yeah. Uh, how much of it got damaged and how much didn't. Jeff, get, is, is there a drug that if they give it to them in so many minutes after the stroke or so many hours after the stroke, it uh, uh, reduces the damage? I, I agree. And, but there is a drug. Well, though, they found right? a hemorrhage in his brain. That's yeah. where the stroke occurred. And then they supposedly did a... Uh, stent or something in there and got it to bleed out yeah uh yeah. am i am i is this pretty much seem familiar to you uh yeah yeah, yeah. That's, i mean when i had it done remember it was many many years ago so the the technology has gotten better and better yeah yeah Same. so Quite i'm better. i'm just hoping that he's you know she <laughs> says he sees he, she saw him today i keep getting messages from her she saw him today and he was in uh he, he he she could understand him uh mm -hmm. although he wasn't completely able to talk and and uh uh he was eating some food and things like that so she was hopeful that it was going to get better but you know uh he's still in the hospital and probably be there for quite a while so we will just uh, hope and pray that he's going to be okay you know yeah. as i remember for me it didn't take too long to be in the hospital yeah. um but i had a lot of uh therapy and it took me well a whole i'm sure year. he's going to have a lot of therapy ahead yeah. it took know. me a year to really but here's the thing up. here's the thing i feel bad about uh comedians rely on a couple of things and one of them is being able to stand on stage uh which i suppose he could do but to get out there it would be you know difficult and then he could probably sit on a chair. But then the other thing is speaking, I mean, and timing. And yes. that, timing is going to be affected by it. That's the hard part. But he's still got his writing he can do, which, if he can type, you know. And I just, I feel so bad for him. And I, it just, it's just another friend who's, you know, this one didn't die. But, you know, it was, it was close. It was really close, and uh, I'm keeping out a good thought for him. But you know, so uh, it you know it, it, it's it's better when they have the stroke after the show. You know, uh, was Larry Brown on the refund table? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. uh, but he's always joking about that. But, hey, you people have talked to each other for a second. I got to go get some uh, nose spray because my nose. Needs no spray. Hold on. I'll be right back. Let me see here. Oh, that's uh, here? that's, oh, that's no? really okay. awful. You know, okay. I'll be right one back. minute on. you're okay, and the next minute 
you're laying in a hospital bed. Have, uh, in here is where we have yeah. the... Uh, Next minute you're dead, you know. Well, hopefully not. Uh, it's amazing. Well, I mean, it can't it will happen to us all eventually, here. but mm -hmm. yeah. Two hypochondriacs living together and have more than they the possibly part can use. But anyway. so anyway, yeah. I got the nose spray, so I'll be fine. Uh, you, memory. Yeah, Alex. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. This mic, is not the uh, nose spray. You're, you're interrupting the show <laughs> right now. She's all, go ahead and talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> I'm feeling we're glad to talk amongst yourselves. It's another, yeah, another old SNL skit from way back. This is the good stuff. It's a closet. This is the real good stuff. Oh, you see my uh, my uh, my uh, my pajamas? Yeah. Very nice. That's what we all the red wear now, Kathleen. Would you find me sexy wearing those uh, pants? <laughs> I got the. Would you just want to jump my bones in the sack? <laughs> if I had you worn get them those at the Gabnet store. I mean, oh, that's awesome. Let's it's official. Let Let's say you first. Let's say you first met me, okay? And we go back to my place and I say, "Wait a minute, I got to make myself comfortable." And I put these pants on. Uh, would you Would you have fucked me? Uh, did he have, Kathleen, did he have that old beat-up blue bathrobe when you knew him? <laughs> he had a bathrobe with the pocket falling off. And uh, oh, Listen, when I, when I find a bathrobe I like, I never get rid of that bathrobe. Dan's got his hand. Yes, up, Dan. Oh, well, I just, uh, you know, you, you were, earlier tonight you were talking to your ex-wife, Ronnie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kathleen, she's your ex-girlfriend, I guess. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, Marjorie's off the show. What's what's what's, what's going on around here? You would probably like, know me as Schmooty. Well, the fact Schmo is, oh, you, yeah, that's a pet name. You know, I take great yeah, pride in the fact that I still know these people and they still talk to me. Yeah. You know, most of the time when you have girlfriends and yeah. you break up or wives and you break up, that's it. You don't talk to them anymore. How come you don't have Susan on? I always considered her a friend. I really liked Susan. You know? Uh, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, she was Marjorie. smart. They're, they're uh, funny. He, he, she was smart and she was uh, fun. Yes, but there are problems. Okay. You know and and it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with the relationship between she and I. It has to do with the fact. Well, I just I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Okay. When I was hanging out with him, I didn't tell anybody. He would, a Alex would say, "Do you mind if I talk about you?" And I'd say, "Yeah, just don't use my last name." Well, everybody calls me Kathy, or they just call me Halstead, or fucking Halstead. Yeah. So um, he would talk about Kathleen. So one time he's got a live show at Tommy T's in San Ramon, and so about six fifteen, a huge entourage of UPS drivers come in, and some of them for, are from Oakland, and some of them are from San Ramon. So when he would go to commercial, he'd come straight off the stage and walk straight to me. And do I sound okay? Am I going to get fired? Do you think it's cancer? <laughs> I'd say everything's fine. Pat him on the ass, and then Alex in ten, and I'd send him back up to the stage. So by like the fifth time. He goes back onto the stage. These drivers come running up to me and they go, Kath, are you Kathleen? And I said, yes. Shh. <laughs> and man, by that time, it was a wildfire around the building. But I'd have people come up to me and say, how can you stand that SOB? And I go, you guys don't understand. He is an entertainer. His job is to entertain. Yeah. When he's off the air, he's completely different. Yeah. People had a hard time separating you, Alex Bennett, from yeah. Bennett. Yeah. You know. And I used to play a piece of shit on the radio. That was my that was my that was my character. Oh, you'd start yeah. so much shit. It was fan freaking tastic. Yeah, yeah. So you know, but I mean, uh, 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 the one thing I liked about you, I tell you, uh, 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 and I broke with a couple of women in my time because of this. You never ever told anybody who your boyfriend was. You were always very secretive about that. Uh, and I appreciated that because I, would, I, I had other people that I knew, other women that I knew, that I heard that would brag about who they were going with. You know, and I that I didn't like that because I didn't feel they were going with, with Bennett no. Schwarzman, they were going with Alex Bennett. 
you know. Precisely. I mean, the first time we went out, you hardly said two words. I mean, we must have slammed about 20 Diet Cokes each. And then Tony Tantilla was on the phone, and then you hand the phone to me, and Tony Tantilla was asking me a bunch of questions. And after that, we were inseparable. I mean, I loved you for you, not I mean, not Alex Bennett, but yeah. Bennett Schwartz. But you didn't go around telling your friends, hey, guess who I'm going with? And that's I what I really say appreciated. A word. Nope. You know, and this particular story is a case in point where you didn't want anybody to really know who you were going out with, you know. Oh, so It was beside the point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, uh, you know, I, I it, um, it was, uh, I just let another one go, by the way, folks, but you can't smell it and you didn't hear it, so. Alex is farting up a storm. No, it, I don't know. Burr. You know, some days I don't know where the gas comes from. From your ass. I mean, you know, I, what, you know, you know what would you eat today? What, what did I eat today? I had some shrimp and some sausage. Damn. For breakfast, and that was it. I didn't eat much of anything. I didn't eat much of anything. So I'm farting. Lyrica. Huh? Lyrica. It could be the Lyrica's doing it. That the reason. Lyrica causes farting. Who knows? You never know. You never know. I should look at the uh, the uh, uh, you know the the effects of it uh, right. online. Sorry. You know, and if it says could cause fi excessive farting, you know, yeah, I'll go well. I'll get a job playing music. You know, but anyway, uh, but it, you know, so I I you ever light one? Huh? No, I never light lighted a fart. I was too afraid that it would like uh, it would like go Switch the hairs. It would go inward. Well, you, you can light your farts because it's butane. You know. Did uh, you hear that? Yeah. My son is loving this. He's I know he's gonna be like, hey mom. Well, then I will tell your son the cows have lots of butane in their farts, and cows methane. fart a lot. Methane. So get your get get your get methane. So get your yeah. um, get your uh, your your um, uh, cigarette lighter out uh, there, Sean, and get out to a pasture somewhere and have some fun. You know. Uh, yeah. Outside. I never yeah. did this, but anybody ever do cow tipping? No. Supposedly, I never did it, but I always heard about it. Yeah, because and cow because sleeps in my, in my neck of the woods. Yeah. You know, that's where we got a lot of farms and stuff like that. We raised sheep when I was a kid, but not cows. But uh, I never had the guts to go up to a cow and try to tip them over. Well, no, but they they sleep standing yeah. up, and you do it while yeah, they're sleeping. But I never, I, I never had the guts to do it. I was afraid, like, the cow would just squash me or something. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, I f <laughs> fuck cows. You know, I mean, cows are the stupidest animals on the planet. And I, yeah. I hate to say this because Marjorie loves cows. We've got little cow statues everywhere in the house and spots and things like that. She, she loves Pretty fucking stupid. But, but they are know, really stupid. stupid. I'll tell you how stupid they are. I actually have a video somewhere. I was out in the backwoods of Marin, and uh, there was this pasture of cows, and I called them the hair, the hair club for cows because they, they were these special kind of cows that have like this, this tuft of hair up here that looks like a hair piece. Oh, wow. Uh, and and, and uh, one cow was sitting down, and another mm -hmm. cow was standing over and pissing on his head. Now, you know, I mean, that's <laughs> stupid, okay? And the cow, the cow was getting pissed on, didn't move and didn't look like he was saying, what the fuck's going on here? Why are you pissing on my head? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So oh, I, I never, uh, you know, I've never had uh, a great uh, affection for cows at all. Yeah. Well, Common I, side effects of I, Lyrica yeah. Yeah. In, include yes. infection, ataxia, blurred vision, constipation, uh, 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 dizziness, drowsiness, fatigue, headache, peripheral uh, edema, tremor, weight gain, visual field loss, accidental injury, uh, yeah. abnormal gait. Uh, abnormal abnormal gait. Abnormal wait a minute. Thinking. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Abnormal gait. The whole time you're reading it, Phil, he's acting it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he, he doesn't have to act it. He's, yeah. He's taking the pill. He's uh, living. Uh, let's see. Uh, Congestive dysfunction, confusion, edema, huh? neuropathy. Huh? Huh? Neuropathy, uh, neuropathy. That's a side effect. But if, if it cures uh, neuropathy, why do you get neuropathy? 
you get neuropathy. It's a side effect. A speech disturbance, yeah. vertigo, visual disturbance, uh-huh. uh, uh, increased appetite, tw- uh, twitching. Come, on, can you do the twitch? <laughs> okay. Uh, where was I? Oh, uh, see below for a comprehensive list. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> like that's not enough. But farting was not one of them. Really? What constipation was that? Could have some. Are you constipated, no. Alex? No. Okay. No, I mean I shit. You know, I sometimes I sit on the toilet and I can't shit. I only fart. You know that syndrome. But then <laughs> oh, when I do I, fart, when I do shit, it's like big, huge, huge log-like turds. Yeah, you know. That's there good. is a yeah. word for that in Yiddish. It's called alta caca. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. <laughs> Old shitter. Well, yeah. But anyway, so uh, let me see here. What? What? Oh, I got some news for you here. Wait a minute. Hold on. Let me get. You can give us enough? <laughs> well, I print this stuff as I see it, and then I go, okay, I think I should do this. That's a, that's a receipt for a doctor bill. Uh, you know what I hate about doctors now? I have all these co-pays. They're just like $25, $17, you know, $20. But you, your doctors, a lot of these doctors, don't take, you, you, they don't have anything where you can go online and just pay by credit card. So you got to call them and give them your credit card or mail them a check. Now, I got to tell you, I can't remember the last time I wrote out a check. That is also one of the one of the effects of Lyrica. What? Loss of memory. What? <laughs> Loss of memory, one of the effects of Lyrica. No. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so a- anyway, so where was I? See, now I forgot. There you go. So you can't remember bitch. the last time you wrote out Well, a look, I, if you had seen me at the do, do the opening tonight, I didn't even get the, the, I didn't even click the start streaming button. I forgot to do that. And then I started the music, and then I went to the to push the button for the uh, uh, Alex Bennett open, and I pushed the button for video, which was Ronnie, and then I had, so I stopped the whole thing and started all over again. So I had a nice, that clean start, two. and that fucked up on me. Okay. Right, take three. Yeah. Oh, so uh, finally, on take three, I got start. it. It's one of the Lyrica. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lyrica. Fucking yes. up the beginning of your show is one of the... Uh, yeah, the yeah. side effect. Anyway, uh, first of all, a uh, little story here in New York probably mean nothing to you, but there's a station called uh, uh, um, WBAI. Okay. Huh? Oh, WBAI, Pacifica yeah. Network. Pacifica Network, and it was it's it was. How would we describe that radio station? It's a uh, hippie radio station. Well, it was uh, it's uh, listener sponsored, yeah. and uh, it's. Um, well, <laughs> I was a WBAI greasy volunteer in 1969. Really? Uh, yeah, and yeah. they gave you all the cigarettes you could smoke. Really? Yeah. Chesterfields. Yeah. No, I think they were Virginia Slims. <laughs> well, WBAI has been known for years as kind of being being the offbeat, um, really left wing mm-hmm. yeah. radio yeah. station here in, yeah. and the Pacifica Foundation was a very lefty organization. And they have uh, yeah. KPFA in, uh, in Berkeley. In Berkeley. Yeah. Um, well, they're running into money problems, as a lot of radio stations are, except in their case, they're running into money problems and they don't have, they don't run commercials. They take money I from people. I thought they, somebody wanted to buy them in, in New York for a lot of money well, here, of their position. He, here is the, well, here's the story that I always knew that most people didn't know. They always thought of it as a non-commercial station, but they had a commercial license. If they were a non-commercial station, they would have been lower on the, uh, rather higher up on the dial. Okay, there's a little place there where they did all the non-profit stations and everything. WBAI was in a slot for a commercial station. They did not have to be not for profit. Okay, so a lot of people over the years have tried to buy that radio station because it had a huge booming signal, and yeah. it was in the smack dab in the middle of the FM dial practically, and it was really it was a it was a really a, a, a great buy of a radio station if you wanted to buy it. Uh, but they never did sell it. Okay, now it's a little bit later and radio stations are having a hard time and uh, it isn't worth as much as it once was worth, but it still could be worth a lot of money. Well, anyway, what they decided was that they were losing money. So in order to save money, uh, they were just going to fire the entire staff and just run Pacifica and the Pacifica Network, 
the Pacifica has a network where they run a whole bunch of shows on them, and they would just run that and not have to have a staff in there. All they'd have to do is be plugging the, you know, putting the signal to the transmitter, and they could do that probably from the transmitter and save a bundle of money, all right? So they decided to do that. They, they told the whole staff, you're all fired. Goodbye, mm -hmm. nice doing business with you. And on Tuesday, we're going to, or Monday, we're going to uh, go nothing but uh, this uh, syndicated deal. And uh, everybody went batshit in this town. You know, nobody misses something until it's gone, right? Yep. Then everybody suddenly loves it and wants to save it, all right? Mm -hmm. Where were you when they needed money? Did you send them a dollar? If you didn't, fuck you, right? Uh, so, so the people at the station, I think the general manager, well, um, uh, went in and got a restraining order preventing them from doing it. And the judge gave them the temporary restraining order. Here's what it says. Uh, the temporary restraining order was issued by uh, WBAI local chair, Carolyn McGuire, after WBAI local board chair Carolyn McGuire, producers Arthur Schwartz and Mimi Rosenberg, contributor Harvey Epstein, and a Pacifica board members James Sautern and Alex Steinberg filed a petition in court against the foundation seeking the order. A hearing on the matter is scheduled for October 18th. A meeting of the local WBAI producers is scheduled was scheduled for a few nights ago to tell the whole everybody about what was happening. They have now been prevented from going the syndication route, at least for the time being. And it would be nice if all of a sudden everybody came forward and said, here's a buck, you know, and here's another buck, and here's another buck. And they could say, okay, well, now we don't have to do it, you know. But um, it, it became quite a cause celebre here in town, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, the uh, KPFA... Uh, when I shot Danny Glover, mm -hmm. uh, uh, they had it. Uh, yeah. They had did, the video. Did, by the way, simulcast. by the way, did he recover from the wounds? Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. He he he's a, the lethal weapon. Uh, hey, I shot the lethal <laughs> weapon. Uh, but uh, you know, when I shot that, the uh, it was simulcast on KPFA, which is the Pacifica WBA uh, Pacifica station out here. Mm. Yeah, you, you just wanted to get that in because you wanted to talk about taking pictures of Danny Glover. Of course. You know, I, I had... I, yeah. the, the, the fact is that he, he has an apartment in our apartment house. Yeah, he, yeah. he lives in the city, too. Yeah. Anyway, let me see here. Now, here comes the, the, the story of the... Have you heard about the rape allegations against Matt Lauer? Yeah. Yes. It seems that uh, that piece of shit... Uh, what's his name? Uh, Roman Ronan Farrow, who is, of course, as we all know, is 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 Woody Allen's uh, son. Have you seen there's a, him? There's a resemblance. There's a definite resemblance to Woody Allen. I mean, the red hair to begin with. God, it's it, and the freckles and the kind of Jewish nebbishy look of. No, Ronan Farrow looks like Frank Sinatra, who's probably his father. He actually is better looking than Frank Sinatra. But <laughs> Well, Frank Sinatra was good looking because he was offbeat good looks. Yeah. Ronan Farrow is good looking, but he's not good looking. He just looks kind of strange. He's a piece of shit. You know. Who who <laughs> who uh who writes uh, these allegations against his own fucking father to the point where his father can't get people to back his movies anymore? You know, what a piece of shit. Anyway, he's written Woody this Allen new... need people to back his movies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Everybody needs people to back their movies. You know how much it costs to make a fucking movie? Well, it depends. If uh, you... Gabnet could do it cheap. Well, I'll, I'll do it with my, uh, with my uh, GoPro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Let's see here. Anyway... Uh, uh, and then he, uh, they've been, uh, so here, here's the most explosive interview in the book is with Brooke Nevis, Nevels, rather, former NBC News employee whose complaint about Matt Lauer led to the anchors firing from the Today Show in 2017. At the time, NBC News kept Neville's identity anonymous from press reports at her request. The full details of her allegations have not been made public until now. Uh, she says... 
that while they were in Sochi at the uh, Olympics, okay, that he that, that she went up to his uh, his hotel room, and he uh, then uh, slammed her against the wall, and um, he um, he butt fucked her. <laughs> he butt fucked her. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. Here's an actual simulation of Matt Lauer <laughs> fuck, fucking fucking Brooke Neville's. Just uh, okay. So hold up, Brooke. Hold up, Brooke. There's Brooke, and, and there's 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 Matt Lauer. Okay. Here, no, it would be the other way around. That's 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 Brooke. You've got Brooke fucking Matt. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now. <laughs> Take your quarter. He, he 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 fucked her in the ass. Higher, higher. There we go. There you go. <laughs> there we go. I'm so drunk. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it says Matt Lauer's uh, NBC says Matt Lauer's conduct was appalling, horrific, and reprehensible. I didn't know that anal sex was appalling and reprehensible. Uh, 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 he was fired within 24 of, uh, of hours of us years. first learning of the complaint. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, Lauer sent out an open letter denying wrongdoing. He's quoted as saying in the letter, in a book, it is alleged an extramarital but consensual sexual encounter I have previously admitted having, which he admitted having this, was in fact an assault. It is categorically false. Now, here's the thing about this woman. She went back four more times and had sex with him. Yep. So how are we, you know, I, I, okay, I'm going to believe the woman if she says, hey, I went up to Matt Lauer's room, he threw me against the wall, he then fucked me in the ass, you know, she, he said, do you like it in the ass? I supposedly, it's in the book, did you like it, do you like it in the ass? And she said no, and he said, well, here, why don't you try it? And he shoved it in her ass, okay? Now, I think, I think if nothing more, it's rude, Okay. <laughs> You know, but uh, now yeah. you don't. You have to prep for that kind of stuff. You can't just not necessarily. You know, if yeah, she's not yeah, used to yeah, it, yeah. you know. I mean, uh, that you'd hear a lot of screaming. I, I, nobody I, mean, I ever did it with was happy about it. Said, no. What? What'd you say? Apparently, she cried in the pillow. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but, but then she went back four more times. Thank you. Then I got to say to you, fuck you. You haven't got a Don't case hit me. here. Don't hit me. Uh, she Don't says, the me. reason Don't I went me. back is because I was afraid that he would, uh, I would have retribution at my job and so on. Now she's oh. playing the power play here. And I, you know, I just find there's something very phony about know. this. And that Ronan Farrell will publish anything that somebody will tell him. You know, uh, uh, but NBC is trying to make themselves look good by going, well, you know, this was terrible and it's horrible and we we're we're sorry for her and blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, they they fired him without um, without even having proof that any of this within went on. 24 hours. Yeah. No, he, I mean, he wasn't fired within 24 hours because th yes, weren't they still involved. Uh, I don't know. Say this anything. No, the he was fired uh, for other. Uh, I think it was someone else. Yes. Complained out on him. Yeah. And he, he but, supposedly uh, had an electric lock on his door, and yeah. that women would go in and then he would electronically lock it. And Could they describe what was under his desk? You know when. Yeah, his the, erect penis. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But I mean, I when I heard the story today and and the way they told it, I just kind of went. I didn't want to be one of these people, you know. That we don't can't believe the woman, but I don't know if I can believe this woman. I mean, it it doesn't make a hell of a lot of sense to me. Um, you know, it's sad that these women would take their careers over the next woman coming along and getting it. That's the well, issue I well, have. Well, if you say that you're, you're, you're afraid of the person's power and, and you're afraid of how it will affect your job and so on, uh, aren't you in some ways becoming a prostitute? You know? That's what you, I said. you become part of the problem. Yeah. For not stepping up and saying anything. You know? Now, was Matt Lauer as bad as Weinstein? You know, uh, you know, and, and well, no, he, he wasn't, wasn't as bad as, as Weinstein because he wasn't as ugly as Weinstein. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, Weinstein I, probably had more power than uh, Lauer. 
Yeah. Uh, oh, once it, well, if she worked at NBC, yeah. you would say he had a certain amount of power. But, you know, you don't have to go back for seconds, thirds, and fourths. You know, you should feel, the, hey, that hurt getting fucked up the ass. And, uh, you know, he didn't use any lube. And, I, you know, I mean, I wasn't there. Maybe he did use lube. He could have actually yeah. given her. I, for all yeah, we, we for all we know, I, he gave yeah. her a choice of you lube, know. you know. Is, I, oh. Huh? Yeah. I just said we don't know what the story is. I, I don't. Yeah, but. but I, haven't, I haven't even read up on that. But really, everybody so is trying to act like, yeah, this is true. This is for real. And, and you know, I'm sure Matt Lauer in his mind, uh, you know, I mean, there are women who, I've, hell, I mean, if Kathleen weren't so damn sane, she could probably complain about me, you know, make some kind of irrational statements about, our relationship together. Anybody can say anything. <laughs> and and if I were still being employed by anybody, go ahead, do it. I don't care. But if I were still employed by anybody, I might lose my job over it. Mm. You know. Uh, but, uh, you know. It, it, you know. It, it, there, were, there were crazy women that I knew who maybe in this day and age would come forward and say something that wasn't true because they were nuts. But, um, you know, I mean, at UPS, we had women that as soon as the manager held them accountable to their job, all of a sudden the freaking sexual harassment card comes out. And that used to piss well, me off. Well, you see, I think sexual harassment is a, is a legitimate gripe and complaint. And I think that the sexual assault is a legitimate complaint. But what makes it illegitimate are women who claim it when it didn't happen. That's exactly you know. what they were doing. As soon as a manager was holding them accountable to their job because they were, in fact, not doing what they were supposed to do, then they'd flip out the card. And in this case, men have no recourse in, 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 in defending themselves or whatever. They're simply they accused. Do. Goodbye. See you later. They I do. Defend, they, just can't, him. they just can't apologize. You know, uh, who is it, Franco or one of those actors that was at, at the, there was a, a ceremony, yeah. an Oscar ceremony or something, and he was accused in that Me Too movement time, mm -hmm. and he said, no way, and that went away. But every Oh, one the of Franco thing's said, back again, though. You've heard the yeah. latest on Franco. Yeah, but at yeah, the time, uh, during the height of the Me Too, uh, he said no way, and they and they pretty much backed off. But any one of those guys that said, "Oh, I'm really sorry if it was interpreted that way," well, and uh, uh, boom, Louis Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Great comic. Uh, when he got accused of exposing himself to women in his hotel room, okay, I, I thought it was in an office setting. No, it was in a hotel room. A hotel. Uh, but when he was uh, when he was accused of that. He immediately copped to it. He said, yeah, I did that. Okay. And if anybody was yeah, offended. Oh, shit, I forgot no, if anybody's offended right. by it, I am very sorry uh, that, uh, that uh, oh. you know. Hold on, I got to get my headset. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, Louis C.K. was pretty weird. Huh? Louis C.K., that was pretty weird stuff he was up to. Well, no, but the thing is that Louis C.K., well, to begin with, in the Louis C.K. thing, uh, he, uh, he supposedly, the story goes, he had these three women in the hotel room. And he said to them, do you mind if I pull out my penis? And mind you, none of them said no. Okay? Uh, they all, they all, none of them said no. And then he pulled it out and nobody left. Okay? Oh. So, I mean, to begin with, he was very gentlemanly. He said, do you mind if I pull out my penis? <laughs> Somebody could have said, no, don't do that. Or if you do, I'm leaving. Okay. Uh, and uh, he, when, when asked about it, uh, he copped to it. He said, yeah, I did that. And I'm sorry if anybody was offended by it. Well, that should have been enough. You know. Uh, to begin with, what do you do? He just pulled out his penis. I mean, what would you do, Kathleen, since you're the only woman here is the reason I'm asking you. If, if some guy said to you, do you mind if I pull out my penis? I would have said, yeah, dude. Seriously? Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. Sean's laughing. Sean's like, holy. Who did this? Uh, Louis C.K. Louis C.K. Uh, you, you wouldn't have said, you uh, can, but do you mind if I cut it off? 
I'd have, I'd have said some smart ass remark because I'm a smart ass. Yeah. yeah. Sounds like Louis C.K. all over again. Yes, that's who we're talking about. Oh. Yeah. Who's who's talking? That was Sean. He was oh. over on the couch laughing. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, to begin with, he's a comedian. Uh, I mean, I listen. I would never pull my penis out in front of a bunch of people. I mean, I would never even ask if I could. And so, I mean, there must have been some little predilection that he had going for him. But yeah, uh, that's a little weird. Yeah. But but nevertheless, I don't think he should have lost his entire <clears throat> career over it. Do you? No. You know, you at know. UPS, it was male dominated. I mean, uh, whether I was in the security department or whether I was in operations, and my partners and I used to say stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. But you know, and we knew each other's limitations. But you know, the guys were real protective over me if someone overstepped the line. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that you know, I mean, it it. I'd have probably said, yeah, get the pepper and tweezers. Let's see if we can find it. I just think we've had no recourse for the males in these situations, you know, except for them to have to go out and hire a very high-priced lawyer and spend every penny they've got to defend themselves. You well, know? what upsets me is why three or four years later, why didn't you say something when it happened? Oh, because of my career. Yeah. And, and, and just the insinuation you know, puts them out of work. And, you know, I i mean, I don't know about Louis C.K., but from what I hear of that story, I think it's kind of kind of sad, actually, that he had to pull his penis out in front of some people, you know. Right. But but I don't, yeah. I don't think it's something that carries with it a sentence of permanent banishment from the industry, you know. I don't so, think he's permanently banned from the industry. I think he's still performing at some... Well, he goes... I mean, his career is definitely... Damage. Yeah, sure. and he, no, he's just p playing the clubs. I mean, look, look at what he had going for him. He was in movies. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. he was. He yeah, had. TV show. He had a movie he directed that was being released. He had his TV shows. He not only had that TV show, but about three other TV shows he was producing. And now he's out of all of that, all because three women said he pulled his penis out in front of us. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, part of the problem was he was in that first wave of Me Too shit, you know? Yeah. If it had was happened today... Women, hmm? Was one it's, of the women the one that was on Californication? No. Uh, oh, it, uh, she's a comedian? No, that, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. You know who I'm talking I know who about? you're talking about, and she's the one that does better things. Oh. Uh, and well, and uh, her problem is... But, is Phil, that, I heard that there was an incident in an office... I did too. Well, no, I didn't hear that about Louis C.K. It was a hotel room, uh, while he, uh, someplace doing a gig, okay. But anyway, um, uh, I'm trying to remember the woman's name on Better Things. Let me look it up here. Then I can. I say, think Sarah say Silverman anything. said he jerked off in front of her a few times. Yeah, yeah, she said he yeah. did, and they said, "How'd you feel about it?" And she says, "It was funny," you know. Um, so uh, you know, I guess you know. It's a hobby. It's it's a hobby. <laughs> it's a hobby. <laughs> well, I still got electricity. <laughs> Pamela. <laughs> Pamela. Hey, Phil, what you do is you go to you go to your city's website and you find out the latest. Yeah, Pamela uh, Adlin. They've been lying to me for a day and a half. Hey, hey, it's Pam. <laughs> it's Pamela Adlin is who you're thinking. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And she uh, she got a show with well, first she was on the Louis C.K. show. Uh, and then she uh, got her own show, which was produced by Louis C.K., and he got it for her, all right, uh, which was a, a good deal. And then when all this went down, she, like, threw him to the wolves. She said, oh, that's horrible, that's terrible, you know, because she was trying to save her own fucking career because he was the producer of her show. And she, you know, she didn't want FX to fire her. Uh, and I thought that was kind of shitty because they had been friends for years, uh, when he did his first show on HBO, she played his wife in the sitcom. Uh, uh, when he went to FX with his show, she was hired on as a writer and, and was always part of that show. I mean, he carried her along with his career everywhere. And then when he gets into a little bit of trouble like this, rather than saying, hey, Louis C.K. is a stand-up guy, she threw him to the fucking wolves. Fuck you, no, Pamela Adlin. There's what? karma, and she'll get her karma. 
Well, she got Remember an what, Emmy. You know what Howard did to you, and he got his karma, but at least he made up for it. Who what was this? Howard. Stern? Yes. Yeah, what? What about Howard? I said what he did to you, and I remember you telling me the whole thing, and I said, that's okay, because you know what? Karma's going to kick him in the ass. And what? it did, but bless his heart, he reached out to you, so he realized what he had done. Well, wait a minute. How did it get How did it get to him? Remember, Mel Carmison. Yeah. So, isn't it Mel Carmison bought the station, and Howard said, but you got to get rid of Bennett. Uh, um, uh, I, I don't know that for a fact. Okay. I remember that crystal clear. Boy, we're not getting a good signal on you at all, Bree. Mm -hmm. Or it may be, you know, kind of uh, new wave. No, this is... Uh, uh, wait a minute, let me so, see here if I can... I can't yeah. even find him on... Oh, there's Bree. Side effect of look, 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 at the, look at that. Look at uh, you, you should call us back. Look at that. Yeah. It kind of looks yeah, like the old, like, you know. It looks yeah, like it looks like the old diving. the old days yeah. when you got HBO and you didn't pay for it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, talking from about that, I, I, uh, 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 well, that Skype. What, what what's the name of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Kathleen? What's the name of the TV thing that you have? Uh, Sling. Sling. I had Sling, and they've been getting rid of station after station. FX, CBS. Uh, morning, uh, Fox. Mm -hmm. So I uh, I gave it up and I got Hulu for forty five bucks a month, and it's got everything, uh, and it's easier to navigate. Uh, I like it. Uh, well, I'm gonna have to check that out. That's yeah, they, that's the Hulu. That's a Hulu full service. Right. Thing. So I got yeah. the Hulu full, full service. That's great. And, and I'm very pleased with it so far. Do you get certain shows without commercials? No. Oh. Because I pay for Hulu and no commercials. Uh, I don't think that was an option on this, but this gave you like every. It's like having regular cable TV. I love it. Uh, no commercials. I pay four bucks a month more, and there are yeah. no commercials. It's fine. I'm not. I'm used to now watching yeah. TV shows without commercials. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, and, and then I saw something. Uh, 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 Clark Howard uh, was talking about uh, you, uh, YouTube premium, not premium, but there's a YouTube. TV that is uh, similar yeah. to this Hulu one, and he says right. that that's the best one. But uh, I don't know. I, I did the. I'll, I'll do this for a few months and see how I like it. Yeah, I'm gonna check it out because I've heard a lot of good things about Hulu. Yeah, because I had the twenty five dollar a month uh, yeah. sling, and right. it, uh, it's it's not as good as it was. And there's other things now. And well, yeah, we just great. we just lost um, um, Ray. 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 I don't know what happened to oh, Ray. Uh, we lost Ray. I don't know. So. Uh oh, his power went out. That's a possibility. <laughs> uh, oh no! Well, here's Bree back again. Okay, let me see here. You know, okay, can someone explain to me how these rolling backups in California are working and why it's happening? Well, Is they're it, not working. No, there we go. <laughs> He's got the same problem, Bree. Got the same yeah. problem. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I, are you I'm using the Russian Wi -Fi. phone? Oh, you, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm using wait a minute, hold on a second. Everybody, be quiet so we can hear them. What are you saying? I'm I'm using my Samsung, but uh, I tried calling in yesterday uh, from the beach, but uh, I didn't get anybody. That's because so, I wasn't show. doing yeah. the show. Yeah, that's well, you missed a, an amazing view and an amazing time. What I'm country now just are you waiting. in? Uh, yeah, I'm in Barakai. Yeah, but there's some there's some problem oh, you've got. Who who knows what this problem is? Wait a minute, let me show the audience so they can see That's it. Pretty, yeah. Barakai um, has great scuba uh, diving. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We don't give a shit, Phil. Because we, <laughs> do. we don't scuba dive. Well, well, I'm sorry that I'm not coming through. No, I don't know what you're you, you, on the Wi-Fi. It's like we've got this terrible signal from you. I don't know what 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 that's about. You know. Having what an acid flashback. So, oh, so you can't see the video at all. Uh, no, well, we, we well, see it. In we can see it, but, but we see, we just saw two motorcycles uh, go by. Three motorcycles go by. Sixteen yeah, motorcycles. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's really, okay. really crazy. Oh, Ray's back. Ray's back. Yeah, Ray's yeah my, back. I was on Wi-Fi and I switched. I plugged my wire. All right. In. Well, why don't I just turn the. Mm. The video off. Yeah, I guess. Frozen? 
I guess. No, he's uh, he's got a, a bad Wi-Fi he's signal. Maybe your power went out. Yeah. Try try one more time here. Yeah. yeah. Am I am I frozen? No, no you're, you're fine. fine. Oh, no, on, my, fine. on my screen, I am. No. Uh, How about now? Nah, you were still uh, getting same this. thing, Brie. It's it's hard to explain, okay. but it looks kind of like you know I I described it as looking like HBO. Now we lost uh, we lost there's, Ray again. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. Ray. Uh, no, Ray's still there. I'm back. Uh, I'm, just, I'm frozen on my own screen. What it remind, what it reminded me of was uh, in the '90s they had those those uh, books that you had like look at this and hologram. You'll see the Lincoln image. Taylor. Yeah, yeah. It looks like one of those. Right. I can never do it because of my eyes. I can oh. never see those things. Actually, I finally was able to do it with Very those old books. Grand. That's funny. Yeah, I was able to do it with those books, uh, but it was a matter of being able to really relax your eyes. Yeah. yeah. I, hey, Ray, you get the new picture? Everybody on the screen is wearing glasses. Yeah, yeah. But you remember the episode of Seinfeld where Elaine's boss is trying to <laughs> look at yeah. those things and he couldn't see it, you know? Yeah, that, that's the same with me. It's the whole thing I've missed yeah. out on in life. I, I've never seen one. Ray's got his hand up. Ray. Yeah, hey, Alex, I was I'm sorry to hear about Will. Um, yeah. I was. Uh, when did this happen? Happened about you know, two days ago. Oh, okay, yeah. At the I called right before, I called right him yesterday the, was, and it happened, happened the night before. Supposed, what? He was he, he was he was a guest for uh, the San Francisco Mime Troupe um, 60th anniversary. Where was that? Was that on Monday? Uh, yeah. And then that's yeah. probably where it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's probably where it happened. Uh, mm -hmm. You know. Um, I just, uh, you know, I don't, you know, I wish him, uh, God, I mean, I just, uh, you know, I feel, I feel so, un, you know, I'd like to be able to do something and there's nothing I can do, you know, it's just nothing I can do. So, um, well, for Michael Pritchard, when he had a heart attack, there was a GoFundMe and uh, I donated to it and uh, I think they raised $100,000. Uh, Michael Pritchard had a heart attack. And you know, they, and the GoFundMe raised a hundred thousand dollars. Now I know him. what everybody's saying here. Who the hell is Michael Pritchard? Well, he was a comedian, you know, yeah, I know who Michael Pritchard. and you know. a social worker. If, you, nice if you look at the picture Pritchard. of me uh, at the um, um, Junior Olympics or the Special Olympics uh, fun thing that we had at the Kabuki Theater, uh, where I'm with Robin Williams, I'm with Jerry Seinfeld, I'm with Kevin Pollack, I'm with Dana Carvey. And then there's one tall guy I'm looking up at. That's Michael Pritchard. He's always the one where everybody goes, oh, Robin Williams. Oh, Dana Carvey. Oh, Kevin Pollack. Oh, Jerry Seinfeld. Who's that? <laughs> yeah. You know, he, he, was a, he was a generous guy uh, in that uh, he, he, was work, he worked with kids, and he really he did a lot for uh, uh, you know underprivileged You know something? I, 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 I think that was wonderful up to a point. Well, that was his the, thing. The, the up to the point was the day I heard that somebody actually saw him in a hospital, looking at a kid wearing his clown outfit or something. I don't know. Yeah. And looking down at the kid and saying, "How do you feel about the fact you're going to meet God?" <laughs> I, uh, I never knew. Oh that. my God! Yeah. Oh um, God! And I went, <laughs> oh "Okay, well, I'm he's, through. He's I'm, very I'm through with Michael Pritchard on that one." Well, uh, what happened, the best Michael Pritchard story I have is we were in uh, Union Square, and it was a Christmas thing, and they asked me to appear, so I appeared, and I'm standing next to Pritchard, and they start singing Christmas carols, and when they're singing, you know, dashing through the snow, I can sing that stuff, you know, but then when you get to Oh Holy Night, or Round Yon Virgin with Mother and Child, Silent Night, that's where I draw the line as a Jew. I'm just not going to sing that song. I will stand there and be very reverent about it, but I'm not going to sing the fucking song. All right? So they go, <laughs> they go into Silent Night. And I, I, I preface this story by saying that Michael Pritchard, years earlier, had been a raging alcoholic, the worst kind. Nobody wanted to be in a room with him drunk because he was so horrible. And he had sobered up, Okay. So we're, we're they're singing Silent Night, and he looks over at me, and he says, Hey, Alex, come on, sing. It couldn't hurt. And I said, Michael, have a drink. It couldn't hurt. That shut him up. That's why you were such a nice guy. No, I, no, I was a nice guy, but, you know, don't try and flaunt your fucking religion 
<laughs> on me, you know. Ah, I, come on, it's Christmas. Even even this Jew would sing it. I, you know? I, I as a Jew, I, I cannot sing. sing "Round I'm Virgin" with mother and child sleep in heavenly peace. Well, Jesus. I don't know the words, so I just I hum. Don't. What? <laughs> I mean, if you want to go, you know, it's a be- you know, it, 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 Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. I'm fine with that. Okay, I'm yeah. fine with all those songs. But when you when it gets to the to the Christmas carols, you know. Oh, come, Jesus. all ye well, faithful, Jesus. joyful Amen. and bright. Well, there I go, singing it. Last year was the How first I? year we didn't celebrate Christmas, and it was so liberating. Well, the best thing I ever did for Christmas was a Christmas card with Schmoody. That's the best. And three kids and a Christmas oh tree. We God. went to Sears, and we got the cheesiest background they had. And we had them take a picture uh, for, and for a Christmas from the time card. the flash went off, all hell broke loose. Oh, the kids were crying and they were going oh crazy. God, and it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a, a major cluster fuck. Right, so and those ready, six so. pictures are, you could see the whole thing. Because at one point, you can tell that you're telling them to keep shooting. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Anyway, hey, listen. There's the theme song. God, it went, went pretty fast tonight. It, it's nice when you're having fun. Hey, Bree. Yeah. Th- <laughs> thanks for calling <laughs> that us. That looks good. Uh, I've never seen like uh, Kuala Lumpur look more beautiful than uh, with what you're sh- uh, There's got to be something wrong with the, uh, with the uh, uh, what do you call it? I'm in Barakai. Yeah, it, it, something That's wrong the, with One of the best shoes in the world, Alex. The best. The best I'm they're intercepting the signal. Well, yeah. well, try us again tomorrow night when you're from somewhere else, you know? Okay. Okay. Uh, listen, thank you to sure. uh, Kathleen. Always wonderful having you here, Schmoody. You know? Uh, nice feminine uh, 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 presence on the show, plus your, sh- your, your son off camera making comments yeah. about the adults. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Jeff. Good to have you back. Missed you. Yes. Uh, 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 Phil, of course, always nice to see you. Always nice to see you, Ray. Always nice to see you, uh, uh, Dan. And it's always nice to see me as well. Uh, By the way, let's all give a big wave goodbye, and I will wave back at you, okay? There we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, They were a good one. We had a good time tonight. We didn't even get into politics, which I think is always acceptable. Uh, Let me turn off my Skype and uh, let me say that the next show coming up here is uh, Jack Bishop and the Exchange. And then I will be back here tomorrow night after Damian Chaplin does, excuse me, he's going to do the intersection. Uh, See, see, I I, got to quit this whole thing. I just don't do this well anymore. Uh, 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 Damian Chaplin's on at 930 with the Exchange. The intersection is next. And then after Damien, I'm on at 10 o'clock at night. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, as always, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See? I pushed the wrong button.